Hi there. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Welcome, yes. welcome, welcome to Silhouettes JB Podcast. Woohoo! All right. I am Gia. And I'm David. And we are your co hosts for this evening, for this, this, afternoon, this afternoon, this morning. morning, this year. What year is it? 2055. Great. Yeah. Back to the future. Back Perfect. To- yes. That's the next <laughs> Another show. That's the next one. Well, you know what? It's so crazy. It's just like they're making a musical for everything. Back to the Future, which I'm actually very excited. Yeah, I really want. I hope it comes to Broadway soon. Yeah, that'd be great. But we're here to talk about Jersey Boys Boys. first and foremost. That is the show that brings us all together. That's why we're all here. We are in the niche, Mm -hmm. and of course, especially this year, we are really are like like trying our best to get as many perspectives we can um, with with the cast and company of Jersey Boys. And we are we're meeting with who we call the backstage angels. Mm -hmm. The angels. (laughs) The angels. Yes. So we have our. (laughs) And they are here right now uh, on the Zoom call in the Zoom studio. Zoom studio. Yes, we're very excited. And so we are we are meeting with 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 some of the costume companies, wigs and makeup, everything. We have dress. It's like a all encompassing dressers, um, uh, costumes, wigs, hair, all all here, and they will introduce themselves. And they will tell us what they do. This is our sixth panel yeah. that we're having on our podcast. And so if we could go, um, like Jessica, Julie, and Nicole, that would be great. Um, so Jessica, please take it away. I'm Jessica Vaughn. I'm a dresser at Jersey Boys. Um, I run the stage right track. Um, I have been at New World Stages since November of 2018. Um, I started as a swing dresser. And I was also doing the laundry during the day. Um, And then I went full-time with the company October of 2018. So yeah, it's it's been a fun little ride. (laughs) That's incredible. Yeah. All right, well, uh, well, I I definitely want to ask a lot of questions about about laundry because I know for me, I would definitely, I would be so afraid I would mess something up. Yeah, I would put something in the wrong. And yeah, so that that's I would say that is one of the most stressful jobs. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but like we will definitely get into that. I, are, yeah. <laughs> that would scare me shitless. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. <laughs> and Julie, how about you? I'm Julie Theory Kuvion. Um, I am the wardrobe supervisor at New World Stages, and I am the associate costume designer for New World Stages and the tour. Wow. Nice. All right. With Jess Goldstein? Um, yeah, well, Jess is the designer designer and I'm the associate designer, which means I just make sure his design is being carried out essentially. Right. Wow. What an uh, awesome role. Yeah. I started in 2018 also in March, also as a swing. Actually, I think all three of us started as swings in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, so I started as a swing and then I don't remember when I started full time, but it was in the stage right track. Um, and then I took over the wardrobe supervisor position during the pandemic and, um, yeah. And actually all of four, all of us know all four of the tracks that we run. So we can say we run one track, but really we run all of them. <laughs> all right. So you, so you all cover four specific tracks. We'll definitely get into the, the nitty gritty of that. Awesome. Okay, great. And then Nicole. Uh, hi, I'm Nicole Ferrigno. I am the wig supervisor, uh, Jersey Boys New World Stages. I have been there since February of 2018, uh, started as a swing, and I believe in January 2019, I took over as the wig supervisor, and my job is to maintain all things wig and hair throughout the show. Wow. All right. So everyone needs to know this is, these are crucial roles for the show. Seriously. Like you guys, like it's all about the detail in Jersey boys, especially, you know, with, with the scripts and of course, with the detail of the costumes, of the wigs, of everything. So just thank you so much for all you do. And it's so cool. You all started around the same time. So you've been like in the trenches and the bowels of new world stages. So, so what's it like working backstage every day? Depends right. on the night. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Depends. how about this? What if, what if, maybe we could take a step back. So, so you guys have had a specific, especially challenging time over the past month, you know, with all the cancellations um, and, and just, yeah, it's just been crazy. I know like the first way you have canceled performances was before Christmas and then you were closed, I believe from like the 20th to the 27th, yeah. the 22nd to 27th. Um, and then I know you got like more actors needed to come on board. Um, who are at, who are at our standbys now. So 
um, one at a time, if you could talk about your experience, um, just with how you've been dealing with it and being rock stars, like while you do it, because I, I can imagine the stress um, that you've been under. Uh, do you guys want me to take that one? Yeah, well, yeah. Why, don't you, why, don't, why don't we start with you, Julie? <laughs> I mean, it's been crazy. We have, I don't know if you guys know, we have technically one costume storage unit. It's in Wappingers Falls, New York, um, along with a bunch of other shows that store there. Like, I don't know, Wicked, Hamilton, a whole bunch of shows. Um, and it's great and it's actually beautiful and the drive's nice. However, it is two hours away from the city. Um, so we've been doing a lot of back and forth just to grab costumes for people. Um, but also because it is so far away, sometimes we're told like last minute or on an emergency that people are going on and we've just had to use basically what's in the building to get people in the show. Um, so, you know, luckily most of us, I mean, us three at least have people's measurements kind of on hand and in our mind, at least generally to be able to put people on last minute. But, you know, it's not always perfect. And sometimes we'll have to like, you guys probably know because you've seen the show how many times for example um for finale right the girls have those beaded dresses the white right. ones but in some versions like the tour and us we have ones that don't have the beads and they're just like really sparkly right you've seen both versions of those mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so some of our swings come with whatever version so some days we have to switch out all the dresses some days we have to put in the sparkly dresses it depends so mm -hmm. It's just kind of seeing what we have in the building that fits people, um, what is ready to go, because we have to adhere by like three sets of union roles with costumes and cleaning of them, dry cleaning, people can't share costumes, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been a little crazy, but um, we make it work. <laughs> so it what work. are those, those union rules? There's a million of them, but like the one that... Uh, is most operative in this situation is that um, one, people cannot share shoes. They all need to have their own shoes. And two is that people can share costumes. Like they can share each other's costumes. However, they have to be laundered and or dry cleaned in between use. So like, I can't have one person wearing the clothes tonight and then someone else who's the same size wearing it tomorrow unless I unless we wash everything essentially. Of course. <laughs> you know, right. that's, I, I grew up, you know, both G and I grew up in community theater and um, a lot of the shows that we did were double cast. So I would, we would share roles with other people. So when I just, you know, in the spirit of full disclosure, I'm a sweater, you know, I sweat a lot. And, <laughs> um, I, and I, 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 I did, I did, I, I played roles like Shrek and the Cowardly Lion and and Fagin and Oliver and Tevye and Fiddler on the Roof and I had to share these costumes with other people who didn't sweat as much as me and I always felt so bad <laughs> but because it's like but you know you know what I remember I remember our costume team they would spray especially after I wore it they would spray it with vodka mm -hmm. to disinfect mm -hmm. it and like sanitize it because we didn't have a laundry budget and we couldn't like we, we didn't really we didn't really have people who could like wash the clothes so i just i always felt so bad especially like on a two show day mm -hmm. where as, if i did the matinee and then my double cast had to play the evening i always felt very bad yes. and i was like i'm <laughs> sorry you know but can't control it <laughs> Yes, but that does not happen at New World Stages. No, so it does not. I just want, okay, yeah, I just want to make no. that very clear. It does not happen at New World Stages. No. There is, there is, is there, what is, is there, what's the laundry budget? Is there budget? a budget list? Uh, <laughs> I mean, as much as detergent costs, but we have a that does laundry. You know, so we have a person who does laundry every weekday. She can't do it on the weekends because we have, um, you know, a matinee and a night show. There's not enough time. So she's in every weekday. She does laundry. Um, she also swings into dresser tracks. So she's like multi-talented. Um, mm -hmm. But she'll rock out like four people's laundry in a day, which you have to wash them. You have to get them dry. You have to press them all. There's wow. specific directions for this shirt and that shirt. And um like you said, like you can't even put them, you can't just throw them in the wash. There's like a process for everything. Exactly. And you can't just spray them with vodka. 
No. We have a lot of special relationship with uh, Total Wine and more. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a special relationship, relationship with them. them. Basically just figuring out like which things are hand wash only. That's the big mm-hmm. thing because a lot of the shirts, the custom shirts, especially like the bowling shirts that the guys, the seasons mm-hmm. wear, like the red one for Nick Massey, if you wash that with anything else, it's going to get red dye everywhere. So like right. that one's like a specific, like you kind of have to like pay attention to what you're washing with that. That's normally a hand wash only situation. Um, like a lot of the girls dresses, a lot of that kind of stuff is hand wash, but um, basically just making sure that like collar stays are out before you throw stuff in the washing machine and Velcro is all attached so that it's not getting stuck to everything, just kind of stuff like that to like make sure that the shirts maintain as much what's the word integrity Integrity. yeah integrity as possible (laughs) yeah there we go yes like just making sure like keeping the longevity of the costumes while also like washing them multiple times a week that's the biggest thing so it's just like Mm -hmm. paying attention to minor details of that yeah because they ain't ain't cheap (laughs) oh go ahead go ahead go ahead no saying because they're not cheap (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they yeah. ain't cheap. Now, is there a no. special laundromat you guys go to? Because I, well, on I, either on Columbus or Broadway at around sixty, like by Lincoln Center, there is a laundromat that like advertises. Oh yeah, we wash clothes for Broadway, for Broadway, yeah. Broadway productions. Oh no, we I, I know the one that you're talking about. Um, but no, we have a wash. Well, some shows will have multiple, multiple washers and dryers because of our space limitations at New World. We have one washer and dryer um not ideal but we make it work and um we use an amazing dry cleaner that a lot of other shows use too called windsor cleaners um w-i-n-z-e-r they're great they actually won a special tony for their service to broadway shows really yeah wow that's that's uh, wonderful yeah, and the guy who runs it, I believe he's the owner of it, is a guy named Bruce Barish, and he's amazing, and he will, you know, he'll do special stuff overnight, like, especially with this this kind of pandemic COVID situation. He's been doing overnight stuff for us that's, like, returned in, like, less than a 10-hour turnaround. Um, wow. We had an incident with the red bowling shirt that Jessica <laughs> was talking about, where, because mm-hmm. we hand wash it but like it was brand new and you know the red blood all over the white and it looked like an absolute disaster and his magical unicorn dry cleaning got it clean it was crazy (laughs) really yeah Yeah. Yeah. wow well a salute to windsor and that quality service (laughs) yeah right (laughs) our 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 drinks go out to you bruce yes Yes. my god okay so there's there's so much here and then so we're all about the deep dive so i just have so many questions like how like so when when we talk about costume design and wig design like are these like a hand like made custom made or like did um like you know if Jess like went to certain stores and and grabbed you know certain pieces that would be replicated or are those like the actual pieces that that they actually use um can anybody speak to those um particularly with with the wigs too um Nicole I would love to hear about how how that is because I know like people can buy wigs all the time but a, a real professional theatrical wig is like is unbelievable uh, yeah, I mean, the original design was by Chuck LaPointe, and recently we just switched associates, so it's uh, Liz Prince, who has taken over as the wig associate, so I work closely with her um, in that regard, and then it's my job to maintain, but in terms of, like, Chuck would come up with the styles, and the wigs themselves are custom built to fit the head of the actress, um, and then obviously the guys had wigs too, so it'd be for both of them. Um, and they're hand ventilated. So ventilating is when you have the wig lace and they hand sew individual pieces of hair into these tiny little holes, like picture laced. <laughs> and it takes a really, really long time and it's a lot of work and it's all human hair wigs. And uh, yeah, wow. they're great to work with. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Charles, Charles' wig design is amazing. We just saw we just saw the final performance of being too proud. And oh, of nice. course yeah. there's- yeah, of course, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of incest between Ain't Too Proud and, 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 <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to say overlap. Yeah. I mean, did you guys say the chair yeah. pushes or what? 
It literally is. <laughs> what? A, a, the chair pushes. I know. With, with fucking, we flipped with fucking out. Uh, what's his name? Barry Gordy. Yeah. I mean, but so you see, so funny. Uh, his his chair pushes were more like Lou the accountant's chair push. It wasn't like Davis. Right. Or you know. I mean, I'm tearing up. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> So, so you guys got new wigs, you guys got new jewelry, you guys got new costumes. I mean, yeah. I think the big, the, some of the, uh, for me, the costumes, I think the ones that I noticed um, besides for the Paul costumes, like the really new ones, crew, all new set of costumes. And um, uh, I, I remember seeing the new Sesuari La costumes also. So um, how, how has that been? adjusting to the new because i i remember when they they opened up new world stages a lot of things got fitted out because of money space so what was what was kind of the process in getting these new costumes back and and how how what was the adjustment yeah how'd you do it during the pandemic it's like um well it it's kind of a longer story actually um, please tell the whole thing we'd love to hear <laughs> we're here for it you can edit out all the boring parts. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So basically, the catalyst was definitely Jess Goldstein coming back because, uh, I mean, you guys probably know, or maybe you don't, I don't know. Jess Goldstein is retired. Mm -hmm. mm, didn't know so, that. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. and for years and years, so basically, backing up even more, I'm sure you guys know, the shows have associates. So after the show's up, the designers kind of, not disappear, but disappear, and they'll Step check away. it. Oh, yeah um and then the associates take over so functionally then the associate becomes not the designer but like responsible for the design and mm -hmm. upholding the integrity so um for years and years the associate designer on this show was lee austin he's amazing mm. also like an og wardrobe supervisor like he's great like i he was the original supervisor on broadway for jersey boys um and he just kept the show going for a really long time um but for the film this summer he uh wasn't available unfortunately so <laughs> i don't know what they had to do but they dragged jess out of his very happy retirement um back to the film um and the original broadway associate whose name is china lee and right now she's in korea doing her thing but she's also the associate of company oh um, shit. wow yes She's amazing. Jess is amazing. And um, then me and another previous wardrobe supervisor of New World Stages named Rose um, were on the design team as well in Cleveland for the film. Um, so Jess was like, wow, I, you know, I haven't seen things in so long. And he was like, everything's great. Let's go back to as close to the original Broadway version as we can. And then um, there were some things that he's like, you know what? There's things that I've been wanting to redo for years. So let's do it now. Now's the time. So like, um, for example, you know, like for the engineer, the sound engineer, Phil, he wears mm -hmm. that in the original production. He had like these rugby shirts. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now there's a box of 300 rugby shirts that were donated. <laughs> Just as like, I, made, I, I picked them. It was a last minute decision. And now there's 8 million of them and I don't like them and I want them to go. He, <laughs> he, picked, a new, he picked new shirts. Um, he, uh, and 300 of them. Yeah. I mean, from all the productions everywhere, because we have them in storage, we have them in the UK, we had them on 8,000 tours, we had them everywhere. So we don't want to just throw them out. We'd rather God, donate. Can we buy one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one. So we would love yeah. that if, if that's allowed please let us know we would love yeah we'll take we'll take two <laughs> so okay so so all the changes that were made for new world were also for around the world well they were for the film and then uh when we came back to new world stages um you know jess was just like as much as we can i'd like to update you know all the productions at, at, as we can like you know some stuff not everything's available we don't have unlimited budgets but like as much as we can he's like I'd like to impart the updates on the other productions as much as we can so mm -hmm. I know that um London has done a bunch of updates uh and the tour has some updates with I think some more to come as um as 
we can. And New World Stages, because I came from the film and then back into New World Stages, um, plus <laughs> one of our seasons really, really wanted his fall jacket back. So <laughs> really like begging really and pleading. <laughs> begging. Yeah. Uh, begging, literally begging. <laughs> literally begging. Uh, <laughs> um, Jess uh, said, can we do it? Is it possible? And I said, yes. Um, so we surprised him with his fall jacket back into the show as well as everybody else's. <laughs> And we did some other updates too. Jess actually um, designed brand new. So in the reduced version, so New World Stages and the tour and, and so on, um, we have what he calls unit dresses. So the solid colored spring dresses, which are like the bubblegum pink one, the periwinkle one. And then we have summer dresses, which are like that red sexy halter number and the deeper colored ones. So they wear the spring dresses for all of the spring season and then the summer dresses for all of the summer season. Oh, okay. And okay. those are all of the Broadway dresses because um, we don't have room for them in New World Stages, nor does the tour have room for them in their trucks. So <laughs> that's where those come from. But he designed brand new spring dresses for um, New World Stages and the tour that have like a fuller skirt on them to be like a little bit more 1950, late 50s, early 60s. Um, so those were made brand new for the restart of New World Stages. And if you guys catch the tour, you'll see them in the tour as well. So that was fun. But um, so yeah, Jess came up with a lot of cool design stuff, like the crew costumes. That track is almost entirely new. Yes. Um, couple broadway pieces in it and you'll see it in the film too there that has the brand new track we in it. are so excited we can't for that. wait we were actually invited to go um but we couldn't make it because i wasn't vaxxed at the time so I mean, um, we were we were so bummed um but we, we do, do you have any leads on when it's gonna premiere i have no idea i'm i like you know i i have no idea what goes on in editing worlds um i am at it can't be that I can't be much longer. I imagine they're trying to get out as soon as possible, but you know, editing is just so finicky, you know? Yeah, I know, we're talking to Ron Melrose about it. I know it's it's been a process. Yeah, um, I mean, he wants but... it, he wants it to just be perfect. perfect. Yeah, yeah, of you know, course. Yeah. Perfect. And they did film, like, they filmed like, yes, they did some scenes separately, but they filmed the show as the show is, like, mm -hmm. continuous. Like, there wasn't stop and go. They filmed it with the quick changes, the whole thing, so. I'm sure there's some fancy camera work and all that. That's amazing. I'm sure. <laughs> what about the wigs? Yeah. When it comes um, down to wigs and everything. Any new changes? Uh, yeah, we got new wigs, which the girls were really excited about because, you know, a little refresh never hurt nobody. So um, we got some of the wigs. So basically when the film was happening over the summer, um, the associate at the time came in and cleaned the world stages out and took everything that I had um, and they repurposed some of them and used some of them in the film oh. and then took some of them away. So then when we came back, I came back to a bunch of empty wig heads. Um, and then slowly but surely we repurposed and replenished uh, and we got some of the film wigs um, fit to our girls. So nice. they were basically brand new wigs that we were able to repurpose. So the girls got new wigs and they were really happy. And I was really happy because they're new and fun to play with. So. <laughs> Awesome. Now, when, when it comes to wig reparation and wig prep and wig, um, I mean, like maintenance, wi maintenance is there is like, do you, do you clean them? Do you like shampoo? Like, I really don't know anything. I don't know anything about like, taking care really? Of hair. What's, oh, yeah. what's, I mean, what's funny is they're human um, hair, so you maintain them similarly to their own hair where, uh, I'm, I have them on kind of like a rotation because there are 13 wigs that are in the show every single night. Um, so week by week, I have a work call, I go in and I normally do them by, um, I separate them by like category. So I'll do the main character wig. So Lorraine, Francine and Mary will get washed. And then the following week, I'll do the opening finale wig, so on and so forth. But we take them, they live on wig blocks um, and they get pinned onto wig blocks to keep the lace flat. Um, so I will pull them off the block and I basically hold them by the underside and I stand in the sink and I wash them, shampoo them, condition them, deep condition them. Uh, we comb them out. Uh, we have a wig dryer, so they dry in there. And then 
we have to, some of them get like styled with a curling iron, others get uh, what we call like a roller set where um, there's a specific way that we stick rollers in the head so that when we style it out, it'll be the exact style that we want out of it. Um, so yeah, so it's literally like going to the salon, <laughs> except I don't have to deal with people. <laughs> What's a wig dryer? Like, how is it different from another kind of <laughs> it's a box uh, that produces hot air? So it's basically like a, a cabinet that we stick. It's, a bit, it's got a shelf in it so that you can stick the wig heads in it and you crank it up and it's hot air that blows and it just dries all the wigs. It's great. <laughs> and yeah, we, we've used it to quickly dry pair of tights here and there because it's just, <laughs> <laughs> the dryer doesn't work. Know what you're talking about? No. <laughs> oh my God! You guys, and you guys said there's four tracks. So can you can you can each one of you kind of break down? I guess like, if can each one of you break down wh which track you started on and how you got through each track? Yeah, like we just have started at swings. So do you want? Let's yeah, start with Jess. Yeah. Um, I started swinging on the stage left dressing track. Um. The thing that's interesting about that track is that you literally stand in one corner and you don't move. Like every costume piece that you need, you preset over there before the show starts. Because the thing too, like with the half lax opening and closing, a lot of the show, you don't have a crossover space. So you have to take all of your act one costumes over before the show starts. So with that track, you have like four baskets stacked high of just like costume pieces that you need throughout the entire act um yeah that track is fun just because everyone comes to you and you're just like okay I'm here I'm just gonna change clothes okay run away <laughs> like yeah um I enjoy that track a lot though um and then I learned I learned stage right next I think so yeah I learned stage right um, that track is fun because that dressing track also has wig elements to it. Um, that track moves around a lot more. You're out, you're on deck. You kind of go upstairs for the, oh, what a night quick change. So like you go up to the jump, you come back down, you move all around. So that one's fun. Um, it's a hard one though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hard one. Um, and then the wardrobe supervisor track I learned next. Um, that one's interesting because the cues for that track are pretty much the opposite of the cues for the stage left and stage right dressing track <laughs> because it kind of fills in the voids of if, some, if a dresser can't get somewhere, that track goes to that place. Wardrobe supervisor. Um, kind of the pickup track like it got created to pick up the changes that other people weren't available for yeah so that one's confusing okay. because my brain yeah. is like oh it's the opposite <laughs> I need to this is complete opposite of what I'm like my brain is telling me to do this cue is wrong right mm -hmm. now I need to go to this cue <laughs> um yeah and then the wigs the wigs track Nicole's track is very interesting because you get to spend the entire show with the girls so it's so fun because like you're literally with the girls and in the girls' dressing room the entire show. <laughs> I enjoy that one too. <laughs> so so Jersey girls. Well, yeah, well, yes. we we're all about the Jersey girls. Okay. Like we have like many of us is dedicated just to the girls. Um, but okay, so what exactly does it mean to be on the swing track then? Well, also like, I didn't even know that you could swing that that there were swings for backstage. Okay. I I knew that there, yeah, there was Yeah, what does the, that mean? I knew that there was the 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 sub. We knew that there was the sub stage manager mm -hmm. um, track, but I all of our backstage crew has swings. Like every single person. Wow. wow. We, we like days off too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that. We've had, a, we've had an incredible amount of people training on crew tracks the past few weeks. It's it's crazy mm -hmm. because you know we everybody has to cover their bases, but yeah, they all have. I mean, you could call them subs, you could call them swings. We call them swings oh. because we have tracks similar to like, you know, the actors would run a specific track. But right. um, I have, I must say that Jersey Boys at New World Stages is kind of like its own thing. Like nothing else exists like this in the theater industry that I know of because uh, for example, like Jersey Boys on Broadway had six dressers, okay? And three That's wig sick. dressers. 
So that's nine people backstage. And usually on Broadway, your wardrobe supervisor and your assistant supervisor don't dress the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just supervise, essentially. I mean, which is a whole other job, but like they don't actually dress the show. Um, on, on this show, um, and usually wigs and wardrobe are very separate. And they're two really large skill sets that people don't necessarily know both of. The people who work on this show are crazy talented because they have to know both. Mm -hmm. So we have four people total, including the supervisors, including the assistants, including wigs and wardrobe. So stage left, like Jessica's original track that she learned is purely a dressing track, a rather difficult one. Um, but no one else is a pure track. So wigs does wigs, but also has some dresser, some dressing things. Uh, stage right does a probably you know I've been around for a while and it's probably the most difficult dressing track I think any of us have ever experienced in the business plus they do wigs and they also help restyle and block wigs and they do the wig call every week with Nicole um, and then the wardrobe supervisor track um, is used to be just a purely dressing track and now with the restart now the wardrobe supervisor does all the mustaches in the show as well oh. um, all right all right no norm <laughs> yeah so norm and finney um wardrobe supervisor does that but it, it's just jersey boys new world stages runs like no other version of jersey boys and like no other show ever because i mean that i've ever worked on or heard of because all of our full-time people, plus we have an amazing unicorn, Universal Swing, who knows all of our tracks, have to be able to do wigs and wardrobe. And our full-time team needs to know all four tracks because we need to be able to be flexible if people are sick or someone needs to sub out. So the people that work on this particular show could pretty much now go to any show in the world and be like, I'm good. Exactly. <laughs> could, could you name all of them for us? Like the, like, like the yeah the dressers yeah. yeah yeah i mean there's us three so just a stage right that's her full-time track um and nicole she's the full-time wig supervisor me i'm the full-time wardrobe supervisor and then we have geraldine detoli um who is our full-time stage left dresser and then we have shireen and vala who is our universal swing Valina David, who's our laundry. Um, and then we have multiple, multiple swings. We have who, I mean, like that's been there recently. We have Anna Stainback. She just came off of Diana. We have Kate Farrier. She was our original stage right track. Um, and then we have stitchers. We have people that just come in and sew for us. Mm. We have a lot, a lot of people, but we have right now four full-time people and one pretty much full-time universal swing and our laundry track. Wow. Well, you are, you're really miracle workers. Seriously. That's why we call you the angels. <laughs> it's true. Okay. So, all right. So thank you for that thorough analysis and for driving it home that there is no other show like this for you guys. Seriously. No, not even, the um, tour doesn't even run like this. The tour has like no. eight dressers. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. All yeah. right. So, so question. So, okay. So let's say that, um, Okay, so should I pick up one specific scenario? But let, let's say like, so Mary has to change her wig. Did, so, well, so she changes costume first in the wings and then does she go into the dressing room and meet you, Nicole? And then you would put it on? Or are you um, in the wings I, as well? I am all over the place. I spend a lot of time on deck. I spend a lot of time in the girls' dressing room. I spend time in our wardrobe room, um, styling, blocking, things like that. But it's basically, I, there's moments where I wait for the girls to come to me or I will meet them on deck, especially if it's like a quick change. Um, beginning of the show for Sasuari so Law, I changed uh, our F1 track like on stage left. So I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> What's, so is, is, what would you say is the quickest wig change? Is that one? Uh, the quickest wig change as far as I'm concerned is the Mary out of Boyfriend's Back, the two car scene into uh, like right before my eyes adored you. Uh, exactly. That change yeah. involves all three of us. Exactly. Um, stage right pulls the wig off, 
uh, wardrobe supervisor adds her robe and slippers and I put her Mary wig on and it's, I don't even know what the timing is on that. It's definitely less than a minute. Seconds. How much? 12. Oh, <laughs> I've never thought. timed it. I never knew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, it's kind of just like a do it and we don't really think much about it. So yeah, that's it, definitely it, the fastest wig change. It helps that she's taking her clothes off in the car. You know, she can get a little bit yeah, of Yeah, and his shoes. Yep. Yeah, we know oh. the shoe trick. And Bob <laughs> well, the Bob's help. We have to, whenever we put in a new Bob, we have to teach the Bob how to <laughs> help her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Very respectful, but he, you know, if he didn't help her, she wouldn't be able to do that quick change. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, so for context, everybody. So this, we're talking about the car scene where Frankie says family is everything. So with the angels, with the guys. And so, so Mary is like, so she, she's in the back seat. Bob is next to her and she, and she has to change her shoes before she, she, she puts on the robe to go into my answer. So yeah, exactly. Just so everyone knows exactly what, where we are in the show. Yeah. Okay. The actors help us a bit, actually. We also have, you know, in the Bob quick change during a what a night. That mm -hmm. one's super quick. The F2 or, or the Lorraine track helps with that quick change as well, too. She takes his shirt off for him <laughs> and we put his shirt back on. So she's up there being a partial dresser as well. <laughs> yep. So how do you train for this job? And how do you train to do it together? It, three people working on one, one actor, you know, how does that, how does it work? It's, it's choreographed, like any dance yeah. or piece of choreography, like we literally have to practice it and choreograph it, like, you know, Julie will step behind her at this moment and, you know, we work with the actor, like she'll bend down to pick up her wig stage, right, pulls the wig off and it's timed perfectly mm -hmm. um, and it just takes practice. It doesn't go perfect every time, I'll tell you that, so <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> just like a work with it. Do you have any, any crazy stories that you could share, like any maybe mishaps? but it worked out fine. Uh, on that change? No, actually that goes, that one goes pretty smoothly overall. On, on, about, I guess on, anything, on, really. on, on any of the changes, yeah. Oh, sure. We've had every, not every day. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's crazies of all time. We've had missing costume pieces, people wearing the wrong shoes, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then, we put in subs all the time and it's not their fault, but like, you know, they're sometimes new or they've only run the track once or it's an emergency situation. They're put in last minute, whatever. We've had like the angels go on in the wrong wigs. Um, wow. We've had, oh my goodness. We've had, um, <laughs> we've, had <laughs> hey. we've had an angel go on in a Mary wig. Mm. We've had, it's just, you know, there's just incidents and mishaps. There's never been anything like dangerous. Oh, I do have a funny one. Okay. Okay. Then this happened recently when I was out for the tour, when they were putting the tour back up, you know how, um, during walk like a man, they do the recording studio section of it. And then they go back into like the walk, like a man performance with those, the golden maroon jackets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So the stage right dresser sets those. Um, back very <laughs> I remembered last night when I ran Jess's track. Have on one hand, it's Bob jacket with Frankie stacked on top of it. And then over here, we have Nick with Tommy stacked on top of it. Okay. We walk backstage. Mika, or M1, depending on what production we're watching, comes off and he dumps the sherry jackets that he's just taken off. And he takes them from us, right? But he doesn't have time to look at them or, or check them or anything. He just trusts them to be correct. Um <laughs> So, uh, on the tour the other day, the dresser was a local dresser, you know, from the city that we were in, in Detroit, and she doesn't know, she's just, this was the first time she was running the show, the dresses, I mean, the jackets were stacked backwards, um, so for the rest of Walk Like a Man, we had six foot two Eric Shambliss wearing <laughs> five foot nine John Hacker's jacket. <laughs> And John Hacker wearing a tunic dress that's also <laughs> a jacket. So Eric were up here and it was like, it was like a cropped peplum number. And, um, it, <laughs> and John's jacket was down to his knees. So that we all got a good laugh out of that one. That's, a that's hysterical. Cheryl told us the same thing happened with Corey Giacoma and Aaron De Jesus. Yep. It's happened. <laughs> it happened. I've it's done it. Yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Those are like the funny ones. Then we have like the oh shit moments where like <laughs> the zipper breaks, you know, like right. We've had we've had angel zippers bust during right. that quick change and very but very, usually yeah. dress good well I mean all dressers should but like dressers that know what they're doing will carry some big safety pins on their we wear an apron so like in a pinch I mean if they have to go on we'll just safety pin them into the dress not ideal but like as Tim Gunn said make it work (laughs) I think I think the first the first show back um during the sit down when um when uh Cable was buttoning his shirt I think the button popped out. But, yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> and I think yeah, also, and I think, yeah. I think either that show or one of the first few shows after that, um, did not costumes prop related, but what, the key fell off the key ring for yeah. the Plymouth. <laughs> So yeah, you know right. it, it happens. Yeah. So yeah. Who, um, so is are props part of dressing as well? No. Separate. No, I mean like uh well Jess, like you set a bunch of props. We set a couple of props because like I set the Nick Massey keys in his pocket because when I do that quick change with him, the keys need to be in the pocket so that he can just walk right on stage. So like mm-hmm. I do set a couple things. I also set like the Norm Waxman money envelope in his pocket for him so that that's already set that he can just walk out on stage hand that over um I do do I say anything else no <laughs> I'm like props what else that I props that have to do with costumes essentially yeah. right yeah yeah we it it's not like props is involved with costume changes per se but like all the departments are so co-mingled. So like our first change in the show, it's me, Nicole, and the A2, who is the sound person on deck because, you know, they wear mm-hmm. those 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 Britney Spears mics for Say Soir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, we're not allowed to take mics off of people. That's not our department. So a sound person comes and takes that mic. Um, we also have mics, you know, in the wigs. So that kind of coincides with hair and the actors have to know how to put them in. Um, we have mics in uh, jackets hats. and hats. Yeah. Yep. So like we have to get with sound and ask like, okay, how do we create a pack that works to fit your microphone in this? Um, same thing with props. Props needs, you know, everybody talks, everybody talks. So um, it's all commingled, but like, you know, props isn't trying to do a costume change. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. 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 Of right. course. Okay, so, so, and everyone has to have, like, all of you guys wear so many different hats, you know, pun intended. Um, so, do, do you all, like, like, know how to, to sew, how to put things back together, just in case something happens? Like, is that, is that part of the, the criteria to get a job like this? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> people have certain strengths, but everybody has to have, like, a base knowledge of um, sewing, laundry care, Wigs is wigs is kind of an exceptional skill. That's just like something that's unique to this particular show. Um, but also since it is so unique, we do a fair bit of like teaching moments on the show yeah. in terms of hair stuff. Um, but yeah, like all three of us can sew, all the rest of our team can sew. Um, you know, some people are their specialty is like tailoring or something, and some people are great at hand sewing or whatever it may be but um everybody has to have a base knowledge of it yeah cool i figured yeah so how did so did you guys go to school for like for this um how did you all get into it uh nicole if you would want to start uh i went to college and majored specifically in theatrical production and design and my focus was in costume wig and makeup design um wow. so yeah i got a fair amount of kind of the school did a really good job at kind of throwing us in like we designed we ran shows um we had to work in the costume shop so I had a pretty good idea of what I was getting myself into when I stepped out into New York and you know started working yeah where are you from I'm from Jersey uh, and I went to school at Montclair State which is also in Jersey so perfect nice (laughs) Olivia Valley went there too Yes, she did. She graduated, I believe, a year or two before me, if I'm not mistaken. So I did gotcha. know her from school. <laughs> did you intern at, like, like how did how did you get how did you get a job? 
like on like at your stages on Broadway, off Broadway. I don't know how that that side of the industry works. I'm gonna blow your mind right now. I got this job off of Facebook. Are you serious? The job was posted on Facebook. Yeah, when I originally started, and that's how I got this job. <laughs> so, Who posted it? Really, yeah. I feel like with this industry, like. Um, at the time, it was the original wardrobe supervisor for this production, and I mean, there are a bunch of Facebook groups for every aspect of this industry that um, people all kind of like flock to, and people will post job opportunities and advice things, and there's like a bunch of groups out there, but I was part of one particularly for wardrobe, and they posted that they needed help, and I sent them my resume, and I know, who would have thought? Facebook, but yes. <laughs> I mean, you could get them from other places, but... <laughs> Did you have an interview? Uh, at the time... Um, no. I mean, I did briefly speak to the wardrobe supervisor at the time, but I kind of just came in and started. There was a time pre-pandemic where around like the January, February months, there would be like the Jersey Boys flu moment where everyone would go down with the flu. Um, and at the time that I started, they were in the midst of that to the point where the original stage right dresser was not feeling great when she was training me, which sucked. Um, but they were like desperate for people to come in because actors were down, crew was down. It was like crazy. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of just jumped in head first and it was hectic, but it happened. <laughs> Amazing. That's, that's, I think that's the best way to start a job, you know, because yeah. it, like, it can only get better from there. Yeah, this, this entire, mm -hmm. I, I think Jess and Julie will agree that this job is like trial by fire. It's a mm -hmm. shark tank and you get thrown in head first and it's sink or swim, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was amazing. I The last time uh, I went to go see the show was a few weeks ago. Um, I saw one of Joey Labarco's performances as Frankie and there was a swing um, spotlight op who was training. And I was sitting way at the back of the mezzanine and um, I was sitting with these two other people and they the ushers asked us, hey, do you guys want to move? Because they're going to be talking a lot. You know, in training, we're like, no, we've seen the show a million times. We don't mind. And it's also pretty cool right, to watch to hear that. It, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so it just, just listening, I was, I was kind of splitting my ears and splitting my attention between what was going on on stage and what was going on over there. But there was this one, there was this one family that was just not having it. And they were like, <laughs> wait, 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 what's going on back here? And they're like, you know, we're, they're just doing their work. Well, can you do your work a little quieter, please? Like in these very thick <laughs> Irish yeah. Scottish accents, I was like, they're just trying to do their job, you know? Exactly. They don't realize like what you guys are up against, and you have to get more people on deck. Yeah. 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 People just don't well, get it. Fuck them. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, what about you, Jess? How did you get into this business, and how did you get in come to Jersey Boys? Um. Well, I'm from North Carolina originally. Um, which is actually kind of funny. I'm now one of the only full-time wardrobe people that is not Italian or from this area. <laughs> so I like have very much been welcomed with very open arms. So Aww. I appreciate it. At least yeah, I get awesome. I get lots of fun snacks out of it. <laughs> there you go. Some yeah. da, some gabagoo. Yes, gabagoo. Exactly. Hey. yes, yes. Um, I went to school for actually double majored in dance and in design and production for theater as well nice. um with costume I actually when I moved here I ended up taking a break from theater and I went to school with the girls who I went to school with the original stage right track Kate Farrier and one of our stage left girls Emily Fox I had gone to school with them in North Carolina and they were both working at Jersey Boys and I ran into them at an alumni event and they were like please we need swings please get back into the business. You'll be great. You got it. Just send your resume over. So I didn't also never had an interview. I just sent my resume and they were like, just hire her. We need, we need people. So that's how I ended up getting back into Jersey boys or in the theater again, in general, like that's how I came back in. So that's also been very exciting. It's been good for me to have a revitalization of the love myself because I had just like kind of like fallen away from it a bit so it was good to come back and it was good to come back to this group and to this show where like the motto is families everything that backstage family really is everything so it was super great for me emotionally to even just like come back in and just be like this is great here we go let's go 
So that's how I came in. (laughs) Just when I thought I was out, they they pulled pulled me back back in. in. (laughs) Pull me back in. Yeah. So we can't escape. Jersey boys it's like no, no you can't escape Jersey boys no, you can't escape the Sopranos you can't escape you just can't escape Jersey Jersey no, you right. just can't escape <laughs> did you see the show before you uh you came on board for the job I, I actually had you. seen it on Broadway mm-hmm. yeah I saw it on Broadway um I actually did not know much about it coming in um, so I was very confused at the opening number. I was like, where are we? <laughs> yeah. are they, what are they saying? What is it's what the are they wearing? I was so confused. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Broadway's <laughs> ultimate fake out. Yep. Ultimate. Yeah, I had no idea what I was coming into. So yeah. I think so I'm like one of the only ones because I, I yeah, well, because I, I I before I saw the show listening and listening and listening to the cast recording. So I knew, not knowing the context of Saswari Law, I knew it was, and I knew it was in the show. So I think I'm like the only one who's ever seen Jersey Boys who wasn't like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Cause that was me. I literally was like looking around, like is everyone else hearing and seeing what's happening? Like is everyone else on the same page as me? Like, are, we, are we at the right theater? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's actually funny and, too because I found my I had found the playbill from when I had seen it. It was actually funny because I saw several of the current people in for swing roles at that point in time too. So like that was kind of cool to be like, oh, I saw you guys do this, and now I'm working with you. So that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Do yeah. you remember what year you saw it? It was um, probably about four or five months before it closed. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. R- and- R- Rochette was in it. Yeah. Um, uh, Hacker. Hack- Hacker was in it. Dramard was in it. Uh, and uh, uh, Nicole, when did you, did you see the show before you stepped in? No, nope. I've never seen it. No, I she has a trial by fire. <laughs> she has I a fun fact too. Show. She still hasn't seen the show. <gasps> What? Okay. I know. You've never been in the like, audience? Not unless it's uh, more recently into stepping into like a supervisor role. Um, and actually, most recently, while Julie was out on tour and we had a put in, I was sitting in the house noting the show because um, I had the opportunity to do so. But I have not sat as an audience member from start to finish and seen the show from the front to this day. Wow. Nicole. We gotta we gotta make it happen. Yes. We gotta make it happen. Um, <laughs> That's wild. And yes. And, and Nicole, so you have a dance background as well, right? I danced uh recreationally for most of my younger years and then college yeah. kind of put the kibosh on that, but <laughs> Gotcha. No, but it's, it's so wonderful that that you like you both have that background. I, I do too. I actually am a choreographer, so it's but I, I, it definitely all comes together. Like you have to be limber, you have to know that stamina. Like and because you're you're always yeah. thinking. So I feel like that definitely was an indirect great training for you guys too. It does yeah. come in handy. It does because sure. literally, like you know, dancer brain just remembering choreography where people that has come in handy because especially too. There's the on stage choreography there's also backstage choreography and like you have to be hitting the, the right place at the right time it's super choreographed so it's great you, for yeah and if you don't hit those points you will get hit run over it's so right. tight back there so not remembering where you should be and when you should be there it's like it can be disastrous it has might, been, might so. get hit by a roll, might get hit by a rolling <laughs> yeah. chair Oh my God. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, well, just, just yeah. So, we're knocking on wood for all of these things. Like we're talking about it all, but like we never want anything bad to happen. <laughs> it's crazy. And then, and then Julie. Julie, yeah. so where, where did you grow up? How did you get into theater and how did you get into Jersey Boys? Yes. Um, I grew up in Rockland County. Okay. Nice. So not far. Um, I grew up like doing theater, like performance stuff. Um, but then I, I didn't go to school for it at all. I went to school for, um, physics for, whoa, years. and then, um, I also, ha- uh, have a minor in vocal performance, but it was like classic, classically trained stuff. 
Um, and then uh, I actually started working in theater as an electrician. Mm. Whoa. Yeah, and, um, and I ran, so I did electrician work and I ran deck tracks at, um, I don't know if you guys are too, well, I don't know. Have you ever heard of Fuerza Bruta? Sure. Yeah. Especially I, in Miami. Oh, yes. It came, it came <laughs> to Miami. Fuerza it, Bruta. So yes. I'm from Miami. So we're both from South Florida. She's from Boca. I'm from Miami. Fuer, Fuerza Bruta came to the Arsh Center a lot. Yes. Agent Arsh yeah. Center. Yep. So I, I worked on Forza Bruta for like eight years. I was the wardrobe supervisor on that. And actually my husband was the lead in it. So that's how I met him. No way. Okay. And, nice. and also in De La Guarda, he did De La Guarda all over the world and, and in Vegas and same thing with Forza Bruta. So um, yeah. So, but uh, at some point I started, I, I got like uh, a period of time where I had vertigo um, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to climb ladders anymore. So um, my mom's a costume designer and she taught oh, me how to sew and I switched to wardrobe and um, I like it better. So I just never went back. <laughs> so that's that. And then, um, I mean, really, really Jersey Boys New World stages ropes people in. Um, <laughs> when they were first opening in two, 2017, someone contacted me because they were looking for a wardrobe supervisor. Um, and I think they just got my name from somewhere else in the off-Broadway community and uh I wasn't available at the time um and then uh I was in a school for I went back to school later on for um aircraft dispatch so I was in school for that and then um when I graduated uh I was working retail for a little bit and then I got a call from the current wardrobe supervisor which was like two wardrobe supervisors later at new world stages in 2018 um and she was like hey um i have your resume on file and we need swings would you be able to come in so i did and again i didn't see the show either first um i started on the stage right track which was crazy i think nicole did too um <laughs> Now we, we've revamped that training system because it's crazy, Good. but um, yeah, so that's how I got roped in. And then um, I, because I had been out of theater for a few years, I was like, oh, well, okay, I guess I'm back now. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. But Julie, Julie, so this is, this is wild because you're also like, you're, for, like, you're a performer, you're in a band. I know during the pandemic, you were singing with, with your husband and then, so, so physics, and then you said air aircraft dispatch. What? Yeah. Like how? Talk about multi talented, all of you. Like how? Like that? That's so cool. So how did you? Like what? What? What sparked your interest with with that and with like engineering? Uh, I don't know. I'm like, as far as artsy people go, I'm like, what is it? Left brained? Is that like the like logical science math yes. person? I'm a left-brained theater person, so I'm, like, less, like, I don't know. I'm very, like, analytical and logical, and I like charts and numbers and stuff like that, and I'm less, like, designy and, um, like, I don't, I don't create the, the vision. I just... She's Ex lying. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> lying right now. She does create the designs. <laughs> she, she does create a vision. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm, I'm definitely more of like the, the science and math half person more than like an English and art person mm -hmm. as far as just like, you know, in general. So I don't know that I'm just always like, and I, I, I don't like to be bored and I always like to be learning something new. So people are like, why do you know how to do that? But I just like, like to new, do new things or I like to be able to do it myself as opposed to relying on someone else to do it. Damn you right. Know, yeah. Like, like restoring this transom window you see behind me. Yes, I bought a sander and all kinds of things to restore it. Like, it's like one of those things. It's just like, I'd rather figure out how to do it myself. So I just learn more things. <laughs> well, good for you. Do you, do you do you do a lot of DIY DIY stuff around your house? Yeah. Well, yes. I rent this place, so like there's a limited amount of 
effort that I'm willing to put in, but like, <laughs> yes, my husband and I are actually looking for a house right now and we can afford a fixer upper. So there will be some DIY happening. <laughs> Good. Wow. Yay. That's, that's a goal. Like to do yeah. that. Well, well, I love this talk about like being a like, left brain, right brain, or even split brain. And I feel that like, like to have like these roles that you have, like it, all, all personality types are welcome, you know, whatever can work for whatever show is, is needs it. So, yeah. um, so Jess, how would you describe your, like your, your way of, of work? Like, are you like, is it more methodical? Is it a mix of both? What would you think? Um, I have to be very organized. <laughs> Yeah. If things are not organized and like in their place, it drives me a little bit crazy. They'll tell you. <laughs> they, mm-hmm. I'm very, very particular about like where things are. If like, oh, I'm very particular about it. So I guess I am more of a left brain ish person because I also do tend to gravitate towards like a math ish brain, but I don't like charts. I can't do a chart. Yeah. <laughs> so that's no. <laughs> But yeah, I tend to, I also feel like I tend to go that way too. Um, Cause music tends to be more of a left ish brain thing. Right. So I guess too, like, I guess the like choreography and the like music and like the like rhythm and that kind of stuff, like that's where I gravitate towards. So I, I feel like I'm more of a lefty. Cool. And, yeah. Well, I, well, for yeah. every science, there's an art, and for every art, there's a science. You know. So yeah. I, I definitely hear that. But are you like that at home too, or when you get home, is everything just like I don't care? <laughs> like I, <laughs> um, I can tell when I like if my room starts becoming a mess, I'm like I can't handle it. I have to clean it up. I have to clean it up. Like I, I can't. My I tend to be very. Everything has its place. If it is not in its place. It needs to get back to that place immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to be like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it drives me crazy. I wish I was like that more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say, Nicole, if, you, uh, if you? I could roast the two of them for a minute. So sometimes <laughs> like I'll be sitting on, on Jennifer and I'll be sitting in my chair and you just hear things like shuffling and I'll like turn around and she's just like putting things in their place. She's like, I can't do this. And she'll just be like <laughs> frantically like putting things in spots. And then Julie, it, with her math and chart brain, we get paperwork from her. We're like, I don't know how to read this. <laughs> it's, so, it's so and it's so detailed and so specific. I'm like, this is I can't understand. No, <laughs> so it's it's I. I didn't give you a clue on how I am not left brained at all. I am more common sense driven right brain creative and I'll kind of just do I'm like yeah that makes sense great let's do it that way and whatever (laughs) I hear you I think I'm definitely I'm I'm split for sure I think it depends because like if I'm new to a role like especially with you guys like when you're training and like you're like and you're doing like the, the stage right track like I need to just soak it in let people tell me what to do and then from there then I'll be like then maybe I'll start to like make suggestions or do things for me that's like a little bit that, that I know, I'll all know, but I, I know how, how tricky that is. Cause like, you guys always have to be in communication with each other. And if there's one change, like, I thought that that's one thing I learned a lot. Like I'm, I'm in a new job now. Like, it's more like, it's not corporate but like, it's, there's, there's certain levels to, to the job. And like, people need to be re- told things repeatedly in order for it to really work, like w- for an entire system. So that's something I, I learned quickly too like if, if I hear like something just once like for me I'll do it and I'll implement it and I'll soak it in right away but other people need those constant reminders yeah. um so that's something interesting I think it's important to ask questions too I think mm-hmm. in work environments that don't uh, encourage questions or like you know even discourage them like you know figure it out by yourself it definitely can't happen in the theater you yeah know? but I, I I you know but sometimes you know you, 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 at, at one point you do have to like you know there are you do have to like get off your crutch, I guess. Sometimes people use it as cr- like uh, Joey Paradise told us that you know he had his he had his cards that he would write things on, and um, at one point um, he said there was I think it was a very tall props props guy. I think he was the props master. I don't remember his name at the moment, but he was like Brit. taking your say that again. His name's Brett Reagan. Yeah, Brett yeah. Reagan. So he, he, he took Joey's cards away. He put them in a place where only he can reach. He's like, don't use your cards. Do this yourself. You got this. So, 
ask, I think it's very important to ask questions and especially with subs and swings, especially with a show like Jersey Boys. And now that we know how particular and specific this production in the world stages is, um, I mean, when you're like, what, what's it like when you're training someone? Yeah. It, de- it de- like, you kind of have to gauge who you're training. Like some people have different ways of learning, but like, Ultimately, we are allotted a certain number of shows to train people. So like most of our tracks are four show trains and then um, stage right is five just because it's such such a crazy track. But like, I feel like I feel like most of us pretty much do this the same way, but you have to like alter for people. Usually the first show, our trainee will just follow us and watch us. Mm-hmm. And the second show, um, they'll either uh, either they'll be like talked through the entire track like pick up this shirt put it on this person or they'll watch and we'll talk them through it and then the third show um they do it definitely with our help and then the fourth show they do it and we only step in if something's like dangerous or gonna go terribly wrong so within those four shows you i mean like some people like a lot of talking from you some people don't some people like very detailed notes some people make their own notes it, it really depends who you're training and what their style of learning is so you kind of just have to be like ready to not conform I don't know just be versatile right. yeah, of course <laughs> well, you, were, you were mentioning how how you changed the training system um because it, it, it's so I, I, I we had one job like I was a leasing assistant and there was no training at all like it really was trial by fire but but then the supervisor would get mad at you and it's like well no one taught me this specific thing like this this should have been like at least in a packet for me where I can refer to something so what is that training process like, like what do you have to do as a supervisor Julie like to make sure that all the information is laid out well I mean we changed a lot of stuff actually we changed the way we hire people because as you've heard all three of us were hired with like no interview basically and <laughs> right <laughs> there are still emer- out. yeah there's still emergency situations it happens but like especially now we just you know uh we changed our hiring system because we need to make sure that everybody is qualified um and that um you know, we also have like a lot of discussion about since we're dressers, it's kind of a sensitive, like, you know, we deal with taking people's clothes off and putting them back on. So we have to make sure that everybody is on the same page about what people are comfortable with um, and stuff like that. So now we have a, like a much longer training process that goes through a bunch of steps and interviews and references and all this kind of stuff. Um, And then as far as training goes, Um, We don't think it's fair to just throw people into the craziest track. So now we usually will start people on, um, none of our tracks are particularly easy, but one of the more straightforward tracks, let's say. So we will either start them on my track or on stage left, or if they are specifically more of a hair person on the hair track, um, And then we'll keep building up on whatever tracks are hardest for them. And usually, pretty much without exception, stage right is the last track people learn, unless there's some kind of exceptional situation. Um, But as far as, I mean, like, that's the physical training part. And but then there's all this other stuff that goes into it. So like each dresser has to maintain their paperwork and update it for that track. Mm -hmm. So like Jessica's constantly updating stage right with any changes that get made or like any little notes like for swings or any stuff like that um so there's a lot of paperwork behind it and then of course the trainee has their their own responsibility because they have to create their own paperwork what works for them um and ask the right questions and you know stuff like that but we just kind of change the order of the training process to make it less cruel to people (laughs) (laughs) We don't want to sure they thank you for it. Yeah, we don't want to set people up for, for failure. We've had people train on stage right and either like run from the building screaming, never to be heard from again. Or we've had really? some people Yeah, I mean not while I was supervisor, but we've had people that we were like had to tell them that it's not gonna work out, you know. Mm-hmm. Of Which is unfortunate, but you know, if if they had been trained maybe on an easier track first, maybe it would have been different, but 
when there's an emergency, there's an emergency. So what can yeah. you say? <laughs> yeah, of course. Now, as as supervisors, um, wig and wardrobe, how often do you guys go out to tour? I, I don't at all. And Julie normally wouldn't if she wasn't the associate as well. So we okay. are specific supervisors to New World Stages, except now Julie okay. has the added joy of being the associate designer as well. <laughs> yeah, <Right. laughs> the, tour, the tour actually has a brand new wardrobe team and they're great. Um, Albert Payez, he just came off of Margaritaville. Nice. Um, yep, and Tatiana Hillsman. They are great. They are brand new. They had, neither of them had ever seen Jersey Boys before. <laughs> Um, and they're doing a hell of a job. So <laughs> they, uh, we keep, we keep in touch with them and trade notes and sometimes actors. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, I'm, I'm surprised that not, that, that seeing the show as an audience member isn't part of the training process. Like I would think like, like please watch the show so you can like get an idea of like what uh, right, it's actually going to look like. For actors. I for did. Actors. I did. did oh, yeah. Okay. I did. Yeah. We so did like the first day I walked try. in the building. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like the first day I walked in the building, it literally, like I was sent out to the house to just sit yeah. and watch the show. Yeah. yeah. So I had that, yeah. In an ideal world, that is what happens. But like, I mean, mm. Jessica got lucky, but Nicole and I were hired like, again, under an emergency yeah. situation. So there was no time for that. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, so well, I know we're getting ready to wrap up soon, um, but is there any advice that you would have for anybody who really wants to get into this industry and, um, and what work they have to do to qualify for it? Um, Nicole? Um, learn as much as you can about what the job requires skill-wise. Like, if you're like, I'm not a really good sewer, okay, work on those sewing skills. What can I do to be better? Um, I'm a big fan of <laughs> those Facebook group chats, the uh, groups that I was talking about before. There's a lot of like people that are working in the industry that will happily give advice. So just reaching out to people that are actively working saying, hey, like, can I work on to be better to apply for these jobs? Um, but it's really just working on skill set and knowing the right people and just not being afraid to like put yourself out there and be like, hey, I can do this and giving it a shot. Awesome. Thank you. I think this is all theater, but really you just have to be a team player um, because it's all about who you know. And like, I feel like it's true for almost everybody. It, it's like, I've gotten every single job I've gotten from people I know. I'm very rarely, are you just going to cold submit maybe now with COVID times because people are desperate, but like very rarely are you going to just cold submit a resume to something theatrical and get hired. I can't tell you how many times you receive someone's resume and you're like, oh, I see you worked on Beetlejuice with Lee Austin. He's our, we love Lee Austin. And then like, they'll go talk to Lee Austin and see, you know what I mean? It's like that kind of thing. So really it's just, <laughs> you have to be like, you know, networking. Cool. Just be cool, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> be cool, man. <laughs> but also, and then like, just be real about like upfront about your skills. And then if you're, you know, if you find that you're lacking a skill, you can just, you know, either ask questions because I mean, like, at least I don't think there's like any stupid questions. If someone's like, actually, I've never done that thing before. Can you show me? I'm like, yeah, I'd rather you ask me that and I'll show you how to do it. than like, you know, pretend to know pretend that you know and don't actually know and there's times where I don't know something so I go on YouTube and I'll look up how to do it you know that kind of thing um never stop learning and then also like wardrobe particular is kind of hard because like the school Jess went to actually is like kind of cool because they have like kind of a wardrobe program but like you know the school Nicole went to yeah you work in the costume shop but it's a design program and a lot of schools have design programs and wardrobe skills are like this whole other set that's hard to learn and, and as far as I know there is no program for that really like to teach you how to be a dresser so it's kind of like you know you have to seek out someone and learn those skills because otherwise it's 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 like kind of just a hard thing to get into if you don't know it and uh, right. I mean I wish that there isn't school. a specific program no, there needs to be a program for dressers because it's it's 
there is none. It just doesn't exist. Everybody that's a dresser probably got in it sideways or through the back door. Like, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. But do, but do you think like, like, maybe, like, like there should be a few like specific classes for that in any kind of design program? Like it should just be like automatically part of the curriculum. I mean, the sewing skills are definitely super helpful. Yeah. And I know most colleges will make people do, um, I don't know, in my school, they were called like practicums. So you have to work on a crew or work as a dresser or work as stage management or work something that's on deck and like functionally running. Yeah. 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 That's like super helpful. Like there, there are high schools that I know of, like, um, uh, I know you, well, you've been around Jersey for long enough. There's a school called Bergen County Academies. That's a high school and they sure. make their kids. Sure. Yeah. Um, they they make their kids do an internship that's like a practical internship so like that's lucky but you know mm -hmm. otherwise it's kind of like who you know and will they teach it to you <laughs> mm -hmm. right no well that's like that thank you for keeping it real because it seems like that's that, that really is like what you have to do and um yeah it's, it's just such a, such a fascinating part of a part of the industry i love it oh yeah like i think just crew and production in general because like you're, like you're you're using your hands yeah you know? exactly. like, like when you show up like you have to know what to do and you can't just just show up and, and like not do something you know like some people can go go to an office job or now like working from home and it's like well if i'm not doing anything for two hours like it's fine you know what i mean but like with you guys like you have to always be on the ball and if you know god forbid like the, the dryer isn't working what do you do like you have to always have all these contingency throw it, plans throw it, in the, plan. throw it in the wig dryer I swear. <laughs> exactly exactly but it's like, you know, people people sit in the audience they watch the show they watch the actors they see them you know they see the costumes they see the wigs but they don't know what goes on you know no. so this is just so fascinating there's no there, like it's like do you guys know how to pin on a wig probably not unless you're a wig person or a drag queen you don't know you don't <laughs> Yeah. I've had wigs pinned on me. Right. I've had makeup. I've had makeup done on me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've 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 had costumes put on me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. would you guys ever want to write a book, like on 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 like the challenges <laughs> of doing this show in particular? Yeah. Or like any like tips and tricks. It's like I think that's a great idea. This is how you do idea. this for once. Like, like, like you could do like how to things. Like like a, like a ten step process for this one wig, and then Ron, like, this is how this could be different. Ron Melrose is working on a book of all the different music theory things he used to create the arrangements for Jersey Boys. Wow. Now, I don't know if that's totally public knowledge, so I'll probably edit that out, but um, <laughs> that is one of the coolest things ever, like, especially with Jersey Boys. And we say this all the time, everyone who is involved and is involved with Jersey Boys is at the top, whoops, hello. I don't know. It's okay. drop. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> who is in Jersey Boys or created Jersey Boys is at the top of their game. It's like it, it is it is one of the hardest shows to pull off night after night, day after day. And put like originally putting it up in La Jolla and then transferring it to Broadway and then the, the becoming the legacy show that it is. I mean, you guys are you guys are doing God's work. That's all I, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> You guys are doing the good work. <laughs> and but, it, but with the like assembly line, if you will, like that you created, you know, that that's what makes it efficient. Yeah. You know, and I think that's that's something that um a lot of people don't really think about too much. So So Jess, yeah. we haven't forgotten about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did. I thought you did. <laughs> I'm I'm like I'm like the kid. I'm like the kid like, hey teacher, you forgot to give us homework. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I don't just like being conf like confident in going in, but also like I'm just gonna kind of piggyback. It's just like everything that we do is so personal to everyone else around us. Like just like having skills to just like observe and understand kind of what's going on, and that like each individual person that you're dealing with is gonna do things a little bit differently. Like mm -hmm. I think that that's also a huge skill that is important. Um, yeah, like every person that we deal with is completely different. So 100%. Right. So like learn yeah. to let, let go a little bit, like have some slack. Yeah. Yeah. But also like, yeah. I think like read the room, right? Is that what yeah. you're saying? Right. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. 
There are like, some people like we have actresses that'll be like, excuse my French, but like tits out walking around. They don't care. Like that's one thing. But then you have people that are like more private or you have people that are very sensitive to having their wig pinned on or you have some people whose heads are made out of concrete and they don't know the difference it's just you know it's <laughs> each separate person and you need to make sure everybody's comfortable because again wardrobe and hair are dealing with like very sensitive areas or like personal area intimate intimate, intimate areas. areas so it's like <laughs> yeah have to make sure everybody's feeling comfortable and if not then you know it has to be a conversation essentially yeah of course. bring the right. bring the intimacy choreographer in yep the intimacy the captain. intimacy um, coordinator yeah I know that's okay. I yeah. intimacy coordinator yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i didn't i didn't even realize that that was a thing i did a production of the scottish play a few years ago and for all of the kissy scenes between um Mac, <laughs> Mac, Mac and Lady Mac we had a we had an intimacy yeah no yeah. it's it's very important today oh yeah. like, wow blew my mind you know yeah Jersey crazy. Boys has people they have you know the oh what a night scene it's a very there's always very specific discussions about them it's not just nothing is every single thing has been talked about there's nothing like improvised in those scenes like everything has been talked about and everybody has to be comfortable same thing you know like frankie and mary everything everything's talked about yeah that that's the beauty of the theater is people really do care about about that especially physically mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um okay so a few questions so so today's tuesday thank you for taking time um on your day off to do this interview with us uh, but do you guys ever go in on tuesdays like days off, dark days. No, no. Like, so that this is like your your day off too. Like like fully, you're you're good. Yeah. No. All right, good. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. We didn't do anything. We are we have been we have been working on Tuesdays recently because of you mm. know extenuating situations. We try not to work on Tuesdays, but. I think all of us have Tuesday we have <laughs> this, this Tuesday we have off, but I think all of us have made a Tuesday trip up to the storage unit at some point. You know what I mean? Road so, trip. So where, where where is it at again? Something with a W? Wappingers Falls. It's it's upstate on the Hudson, kind of by like I don't know what's up there. Beacon, Cold Spring. Okay. Is there is there a warehouse in Sea Caucus that you guys go to as well, or is that there, another thing? Not in Secaucus for costumes. There's a, uh, in Little Falls, New Jersey, there's our um, prop shop and they have a bunch of storage there too. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, Why is it so far away? Why couldn't they have anything in the city? Like I have 10th think, Avenue or something. Well, you know what? It's like one, everything in the city costs 10 times more. And, mm -hmm. you know, this show's been around for a long time, not only because it's a good show, but because the people running it are good with money. So- right. okay. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, two, and that's not just our show. That's a lot of shows, you know? And two, um, the space required is just vast. So like, I mean, I could send you guys a video of what the storage unit looks like. Oh it's God, we would love that. Yeah, it's vast. And um, they also have our lighting stuff stored there too. But it's just like, the space doesn't exist here. And even like, um, like where the prop storage is that they, they would not be able to handle the amount of clothing that we own. They just mm -hmm. wouldn't. So um, it's in like a huge old, uh, actually this, it's in a huge old factory that used to make bleach. It was a bleachery. So um, <laughs> it's like a beautiful old brick building, but it's like huge. It's giant. So it's just the space plus the money and that's where it is. And, and the, the people that own that storage unit are also in local one. They're like a local one crew family. So they understand Broadway and, and the needs of it. So a lot of shows just gravitate towards that kind of space because they have someone that knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's good to know. You Thank you. It. Can mm -hmm. you guys tell us about the hashtag Jersey squirrels? <laughs> I'm gonna let Nicole take that one. <laughs> I was about to pass it to you, actually. Because <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Jess, that's something that you came up with. I just think it's funny. <laughs> to, like, because we had the Jersey girls and then mm -hmm. wardrobe wise, it was like, oh, Jersey squirrels is funny. And then we would take, 
we would take all these like fall adventure trips like to Mm. nature and so it was just like cute yeah (laughs) I don't know it's just silly I love a pun (laughs) we love it yeah well that that could be the name of the episode or (laughs) the Jersey Squirrels I love it I think this is a great place to wrap up. I agree. This has been another episode of Silhouettes JV Podcast. Thank you so much to Jessica Vaughn, Julie Theory Kuvian. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Woo! And Nicole Ferrigno. Thank you so much to all of these amazing women and who run who run the show, who who keep the show running. And thank you to everyone on in the backstage crew production who keep the show running. Thank you to everyone at New World Stages who is, you know, represented here tonight, you know, who, so thank you very much. And please follow them on Instagram, uh, Julie's Theory, at Julie's Theory, and follow her band, The String Theories, but Theory spelled like her name, and follow, <laughs> Follow Jess Vaughn and follow at Nikki Friggs, but she goes by Nicole in real life. So just don't call her Nikki. You know, it's like, it's like in the Animaniacs. My name is Dot. Call me Dottie and you die. So, and uh, follow us, Silhouettes JB Podcast underscore on Instagram, on Facebook, Silhouettes JB Podcast. Find us on YouTube. Find us wherever you can listen to podcasts. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, share. With the sun and the moon, the stars will all on the one. All right. All right. And uh, <laughs> asalu. Asal- yes, to all of you. Asalu. Thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>